machine. In his 20 years of biking, he fell in love with the country, with the countryside, long distance rides in Malaysia, Singapore, and Thailand. He is a national president of Militia, uh, Militia Bikers Motorcycle Club for Malaysia. We are very, very happy to have Morgan, who will now give a quick uh, introduction to us about himself. And he will also be uh, talking about how uh, we would like him to talk about how the riding culture has changed over the years from when he started riding his Kawasaki to now, especially in Southeast Asian countries, which is not very familiar for uh, the Indian audience here. So, uh, Mugan, I've uh, asked you to unmute yourself. Uh, you can go ahead and unmute and take over the session. Mugan, uh, are you around? Hi, can you hear me? Hello, okay. I'm Morgan Dorisami from Malaysia, Johor Bahru. I'm 48 years old, riding since from age 28 until now. <clears throat> My first bike is a Kawasaki. Now I'm glad to ride CVO 2019 models. The difference, okay, I'm attached with the um, Militia Aradex Motorcycle Club. MRMC, short form is MRMC. Currently, I'm president of Johor Bahru chapter in Malaysia. Our military is base based in Singapore, Johor, and Mua, and US as well. The difference that 20 years back and now, the riding cultures, a lot of changes. Since uh, when I'm riding time, only a small numbers of bikers, the big CC bikers in the road. But now it's totally different. Most young people, they're riding a big bikes. I'm glad to see that. And uh, even the discipline also now is changed a lot. Those days, uh, when my time, I can say the less discipline the roadside. But now it's changed a lot. Maybe they follow their rules and everything. I'm glad to see the most uh, young biker, young bikers choose the right way to the big CC bikes lah. <clears throat> so far, uh, other than that. The okay, past three, four months with the MCO, we cannot ride. I think we are most under stress because of that we cannot ride all this. Other than that, uh, nothing much on my side. That's all. Thank you very much. Thanks, thanks, Moana, for sharing uh, your experiences. Thanks for being here. I know that you had some personal stuff also to attend to. Uh, thanks a lot for uh, still being here. Uh, you know, as long as you can stay along with us. Uh, would be yeah, great, but, you. Uh, you know, happy to uh, excuse you. Uh, be, be, feel free to excuse yourself uh, since there's an emergency. Uh, thanks a lot. So we will move on to the next, uh, uh, you know, rider, Mr. Jeevan Gopal. Uh, Jeevan Gopal hails from Malaysia and is deeply passionate about riding like most of us here. He started his riding journey around 25 years ago and is a proud owner of a GTR 1400. Uh, he's a founding member of Malayan Black Knight Riding Club, the MBK. He's an Ironbird Award winner for his rides in Malaysia of 1,000 miles in 24 hours in 2016. He also has in-depth knowledge on safety requirements during ridings and relevant other riding techniques. Uh, very happy to have um, Mr. Jeevan with us. I'm going to unmute him and uh, leave him to take over. And of course, after introducing himself, he would throw some light on the riding culture in Malaysia. We have a lot of uh, panelists from Malaysia here. We'd request uh, Jeevan to give us a perspective of how riding is in Malaysia. Uh, a small spotlight for the Indian audience here. Thank you. Thank you, Sriram. I'll, I'll take off from here. Thanks for introducing me and uh, thanks to allow me to be one of the speakers here. Well, uh, based on my experience, and as much as others that I have, well, my riding experience is um, from childhood, 17 years old, I would say, the first license that we can obtain, uh, 17 years old. Since then, I've been riding, but not a big bike. I started riding big bikes not far years ago, but I've changed three bikes till, till date. And first was a Kawasaki versus 650. That was a beginner bike. I used it for a year. And the subsequent bike was Kawasaki GTR. And uh, my third bike now is also a Kawasaki GTR. Uh, sorry, I'm a fan of a Kawasaki GTR 1400. And uh, looking at the Malaysian culture of riding, uh, well, Malaysians, we have a lot of highways actually. 
So total length of highways that we have in Malaysia is approximately 1,800 kilometers to and fro. And uh, still building on. Malaysia is building on more on highways. So especially uh, big, fast bikes who love to use the highways, well, they're going to enjoy more. Uh, but looking at the rainfall per year that we're going to have approximately based on the meteorology department, 250 centimeters. So we'll have more uh, rainy rides or wet roads. So looking into that, um, safety has to be taken into consideration, right? And we are in equatorial hot and humid. At times it's very hot, at times it's very cold. But we have a lot of trunk roads that we have in Malaysia that to, we call it interstate and inter, what do you call it? urban rural road, inter urban rural roads, right? Um, well, what, what we have used to do is like, I'm from the club of Malayan Black Knights. We are founders of six of us. We started this club just for us to ride every weekend, almost every weekend, every Sundays. Uh, the reason why is because to, uh, well, to uh, have more riders coming in to ride on weekends. And again, like Mr. Mohan was telling that nowadays we have a lot of uh, riders um, coming up with good safety and discipline. Well, those days, I'm not very sure, but those days, uh, now we have everyone disciplined and a lot of people own bikes now in Malaysia and uh, and each other have their own taste of bikes, uh, Harley from Harley, BMW, Harley and uh, Kawasaki, Yamaha, Honda, not forgetting our Royal Enfield also now is quite picking up in Malaysia too. Uh, touching on my experience is that I will do long rides. I rode to Thailand, that is from land to land travel, right? And uh, not as far as that, uh, uh, not exceeding about Malaysia, about 1,600. I've never done more than that from Malaysia to Thailand. And willing to go more, as uh, like, again, what Morgan says, that due, due, due to our MCO situation that we have around the world, we are unable to write as well as we want to. Uh, it's conditioned. Um, well, this is my uh, part of sharing that I have. Uh, nothing much on need to elaborate, but uh, talking about safety, if any questions are going to be arise and so on, I will... Uh, Raise my hand, Sriram. Thank you, Jeevan. We'll surely have you be, be talk about that uh, once all the introductions are over. Thanks a lot for sharing your experience. Uh, we will now move on to Mr. Jess David. Uh, Jess is from Singapore. Uh, he got the love of riding since he was five years old, watching his dad ride and taking him along with him. Uh, Jess has 22 years of beautiful tales from his biking days. He currently rides a sports tutor and has toured Singapore, Malaysia, and Thailand. Um, one of his quotes is, uh, motorcycle forges beautiful friendships with awesome riders over the years. And that's what we intend to do with Talk Tales as well. We're trying to exchange cultures and ideas from uh, riders across the globe. Um, Jess, I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself and where probably Mona stopped, uh, Jivana stopped. He would talk about, after introducing himself, uh, about the riding culture in Thailand. Uh, welcome, Jess. Over to you. Okay. Thanks, Rira. Hi, I'm Jess David from Singapore. Okay, I can say that I'm riding from my late teens. I'm 42 now. <laughs> and I uh, can say that I've ridden, I, in fact, I change bikes every year to try different bikes. And I'm stuck with my FJR for the past four years because I absolutely love it. It's, uh, it's a great bike for long distance riding, comfortable yeah. and everything I need but might be changing soon to something else, itchy hands. <laughs> and uh, uh, well, I've ridden in Malaysia and in Thailand. Uh, I would say that the uh, Thailand experience was great. Uh, when uh, Mion Song, I, maybe some of you would have known, uh, he does about 1,864 corners and it's a real adventure up there. And went to the Golden Triangle the border of, uh, that's the border of Thailand, and of Thailand, and the border for Laos and Myanmar. Well, couldn't go beyond that because of some restrictions about two years back, uh, which uh, our Singapore government had. But I think now it's lifted, so soon we will be going to Laos, Cambodia, and other countries soon. Uh, well, basically, that's about my experience. Well, actually, I was from a group called Brotherhood Tourists, just a few of us. And currently, I'm on board uh, Singapore Garuda Bikers as well. So it's nice meeting up with all of you all. 
is a really wonderful experience know all the experiences of all your riders and hopefully we get to meet up one day it's a big group all right over to you sri ram thank you thanks a lot jess uh, that's the whole idea we hope that a lot of us would be able to come over and you know ride with with some of you at least uh, that's that's the whole intention of doing this thanks a lot for sharing experience again we now move on to mr murli ramu murli is from selangor malaysia uh, he has uh, he's been riding bikes uh, you know ranging from 70 cc to 1400 cc in his 35 uh, years of biking experience because very experienced rider there hailing from malaysia on his gtr 1400 he has traveled to singapore thailand laos and cambodia he's done a lot of charity rides along with his club members and he aims to cooperate with uh, organizations for more charitable events social services uh, organizing road safety programs for young riders etc to inculcate the culture of safety riding it's a pleasure to have uh, mr murli uh, murli with us um, apart from introducing himself uh, you know we all know that you know in india now uh, we we riders are very actively participate there's a lot of enthusiasm on social causes we'd like to hear a bit on the work that you do uh, and also you know what's been uh, you know uh, the environment like in southeast asian countries especially around social causes rights and social causes etc and the impact that you've been able to create over to you uh, hello brothers thank you sriya okay my name is murali ramu and i'm from slango malaysia i i think i've met oswald the other day uh not sure about three or that met you before or not not very sure about it i I'm, i'm i'm pretty confident that we have met oswald uh, a, a few months ago i think and as uh, jeevan said uh our age limit to 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 obtain our first motorbike license is 17 years old so i have been riding since 17 years old started off with small bike 70 cc honda c70 and then upgrade to ex5 which is still uh, uh, a model of honda and then moved to our local uh, made motorbike brand called chris morenas and then my first big bike was walken 800 and then from there i moved to gtr 1400 kawasaki gtr uh i've been with my uh, i can say that kawasaki the gtr is my second wife for the past 7 years and i've been used to ride with jeevan even suresh krishna we both of us did uh uh iron bike uh, 2400 within 24 hours 2400 kilometers within 24 hours uh iba and i'm a member of rangi bikers club so the aim of our club initially was to to come up with a lot of uh, as many uh social events as possible and our, our the most uh how to say it, the i mean i'm not i'm not bragging but this what we have done uh with one of the, our charity events uh we helped a school which uh deals with special special need children and we started off with trying to contribute about 5000 usd within 30 days and then we started off with with, with 5000 and we managed to collect about 26000 usd in 30 days that was our first uh, big charity event with the club and then after that we started to help a small schools we have a lot of tamil schools in uh, in malaysia uh, so we tried to help up the tamil schools like having a uh, organizing free rides for the kids just just to you know to motivate them by 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 showing the bike big bikes to them that they need to you know they can indirectly we are, we are we are telling them that for you to get this bike you need to excel in your education things like that and we also done a motivation talk to some of the schools in in slango uh and now currently our our next project is uh we are we are still uh, communicating with our ministry of health to to have a, a have a road show about covid-19 throughout malaysia not sure whether that can be achievable or not we are we are, we are not very sure because there are a lot of restrictions and a lot of uh, 
obstacles to, to overcome. So we are still dealing with, with, with that. I, I think that's all for, for me now. Thanks a lot, uh, Yanina. Thank you very much uh, for sharing your experience. We, uh, you know, some, uh, I know a lot of members in this club are part of the Save Earth, right? It's coming up, an initiative that we're running in India uh, through DCI. Uh, we'll probably learn a few uh, tricks of the trade from you as well. Uh, you know, it would be great to extend this to some of the other countries too. So I'm sure that some of the coordinators would uh, reach out to you and, uh, you know, take your help in, uh, you know, extending or joining hands together in stuff that we do together for social causes. Thanks a lot again. Um, Suresh, next we'll move on to Mr. Suresh Krishna. Uh, Suresh hails from Malaysia as well. He started his riding from the year 2000. Uh, he has a technician in, uh, he's a technician in government electricity board there. He's completed the toughest endurance ride of 2000 plus kilometers in 24 hours and got certified as a saddle sore rider from USA. He's an active rider for the government of Malaysia biking activities that provides biking services to first ambulance service, other charity rides in associated events. Uh, he has organized a fly-in ride uh, in North India for riders from his country. Uh, thanks a lot for doing that, Suresh. And his future plans are to organize international riding from Malaysia, apart from Thailand and Singapore. Very pleased to have um, Mr. Suresh with us. Uh, we will also try and learn a bit from, of his experiences in coordinating with government organizations, uh, especially outside India and uh, we're sure that there will be some snippets that we can take away from this talk. Uh, Suresh, uh, over to you. Uh, I'm asking you to unmute, so you'll have to unmute yourself and take over. Hi, guys. Uh, okay, I'm uh, Suresh Krishna. So I just shot it of my, uh, this one. So no, uh, just now, uh, Murli Anna and Jeevan already uh, explained all about our Malaysian rules and uh, lies, I mean, all these writings things. So, uh, uh, my uh, riding uh, already nearly uh, already 20 years I was in this riding bike riding so my first bike uh, as, uh, as I was riding uh, is a Kawasaki uh, Vulcan 500 cc so that's this I'm not joining with any groups I just ride with my just my alone like a solo rider then uh, in uh, 2014 I bought my Kawasaki 1000 cc and I joined a group in a, we call is a fraternity rider. Then as I know, G1 was there. So it's a lot of bikers I know from in that group. And I learned, I mean, I joined some uh, advanced safety riding courses to learn to uh, riding skill and safety courses for the riding. Because a bit scared once while I get my big bike in the road. And uh, there's some, uh, like, uh, some government programs, which is organized by uh, Malaysian Man uh, Sports Ministry. If they arrange by Iron Butt, uh, sorry, um, what do we call uh, Iron Man uh, program is arranged by Malaysian government uh, sports ministry. So we will join with this uh, first ambulance group, which uh, gives some advanced uh, first aids for the participate who uh, participate in the group. And uh, uh, we have, I mean, uh, other than that, so I am, uh, we organize these uh, ridings for normal, uh, like uh, Thailand, Singapore. Sorry, guys, I'm very a bit nervous because it's not so good in this introduction. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. And, that's okay. Uh, okay. And uh, other than that, and uh, uh, recently, what I like as Sriram says, I went to India for northern side. I ride all from New Delhi all the way to Darjeeling. Uh, that is uh, on... Uh, January I did. So uh, on October, suppose I have a big event right from Malaysia to China. Actually, we already do the arrangement and everything because of the Corona, we have to cancel the whole program. So we had in after this, we have some plans to start on after all these lockdowns or settled on everything once the borders are already uh, once were open, then we have some uh, huge plan to organize some rides. Uh, then uh, so that's all at the moment. So I back to Sri Ram. Thank so, you. Thanks a lot. You, you're very welcome. Uh, you know, we have riders from across the country participating here. So please uh, do reach out to us when you're here. And you know, a lot of us would surely love to meet you and host you in our respective cities. Uh, yes. Thank thanks, Rira. Yeah. So I'll quickly, before I move to the next audience, I think Mona wants to take a leave. Uh, I'll quickly unmute him while he takes a leave and then I'll move on to the next uh, participant. I don't know. I think his network is... 
we'll see if we're able to get him. Meanwhile, um, I will try and uh, introduce the next speaker, Mr. Sean Wong. Uh, Sean's uh, biking passion started by standing in front of his father's Vespa, like probably a lot of us uh, here. Um, in 2011, he registered the first motorcycle club, Cambodia Biker Club, with the motto, Save Life and Save Life. Um, he was a chairman for the second biggest uh, Phnom uh, Bike Week in Cambodia. He assisted so many bike launches in Cambodia and started the Hawk chapter in Phnom Penh. Uh, he has rode in US, Australia, Europe for Bike Week uh, for the beautiful family and bikers he got. Uh, he relates biking as a yoga in motion, uh, being body, mind and soul aligned as one in perfect harmony. He quotes, uh, ride on. Uh, over to you, uh, Sean. We'd love to hear also some of your experiences uh, from the Bike Week. Uh, over to you. Hi, hi everyone. I hope you all can hear me very well. Thanks yep. for uh, for all things to see Ram. Um, I'm Sean Wong. Um, in fact, I'm proud to say that I hear some of the Malaysian biker. Indeed, I'm a Malaysian, and uh, together with my colleagues uh, from from. Uh, uh, Tiano View, the other part of this, uh, uh, Cambodia, Captain Chow, is on, uh, in, uh, in, the, in the same uh, life what we have. What I'm trying to say is that um, I would like to share all this uh, experience when, uh, when I uh, get a chance to start uh, this biking experience because uh, I didn't expect that we can actually uh, form a club and uh, try to do, uh, organize a lot of activities. And having said this, is because uh, in the Kingdom of Cambodia, is uh, we call it uh, the theme of the Ministry of Tourism, is the Kingdom of Wonder. So we have been receiving a lot of uh, international bikers. There are some all the way from uh, India as well. We receive a biking queen, and of course uh, our fellow countrymen from Malaysia. Um, they always uh, like to get connected, and as far as uh, they can go, even uh, uh, to Vietnam and uh, China as well from Cambodia. So, all in all, I think the riding experience uh, through Cambodia is uh, something that I can share that is uh, something that we have to always look up because uh, the road condition is not uh, considered good all the time, but it's part of the journey. And um, for us, we have been riding around and as well as uh, in the region. And uh, I can say that uh, we are connected to the biking uh, community uh, in the region as well in the world. And uh, that's where I feel that um, the biking world is getting smaller and uh, there's no any uh, border or consider uh, any discrimination or uh, regard of uh, any nationality. As far as we come along, we ride on the road, we always look out for each other. So I'm really glad that I can uh, participate this. And uh, all in all, riding uh, on the road is really much like uh, enjoying the open road with the open heart and open mind. And taking some of my uh, clubs, and I, I did not actually uh, register with it, uh, register the, the Cambodia Biker Club, but it was actually founded by uh, also a fellow Malaysian. The first president and second president was Malaysian, and I was the third president. And uh, of course, uh, we continue to carry out despite that we know that we are in a foreign country. We always give in, uh, I mean, uh, um, uh, what do I say? Um, 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 uh, give back to the community. So we've been organizing a lot of uh, some uh, charity rights as well as uh, uh, safety for uh, advocacy on the helmet wearing. And uh, we're also doing some uh, activity with the bike week so that we can raise some funds. So this is as much as I can uh, share uh, as far as uh, we have been here in Cambodia. And also we are looking forward to get uh, connected and welcome all the bikers around the world. We look forward also to meet you all. Uh, somehow I'm sure that we will uh, uh, meet each other somewhere along the road and we always uh, recognize that bikers are always just like the family. So I guess uh, that's all I can uh, just uh, have a quick uh, introduction and share some of my experience. So I hope I will not take much more of time. I think I will leave back uh, the home. Thanks a lot, Sean. Uh, you know, very insightful. Uh, and Cambodia is, is, I know for sure that whenever we ride, a lot of people, you know, have that on their checklist. We hope that we will come there and meet you one of the days. Uh, you know, right? so yep. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, so now we'll move on to the next uh, speaker. 
Mr. Vander Merv. Uh, so Van Merv is a motorcycle enthusiast. He travels the world with his lovely wife, lovable wife, as he calls her. He's a mechanical engineer uh, for a world-renowned company. Uh, traveling the world for the last 20 years, he has a uh, you know he has a very few unique he has few unique bikes and he has a very large workshop. Um, probably you know all of us would love to visit that someday. He builds and customizes and converts and so on motorcycles. He does his own engraving and embellishment on his bikes. Um, Van, very very uh, pleased to have you, uh, and we hope that you'll be able to give us a different perspective. I know uh, you're also in Cambodia now, probably. But uh, would be great to understand how important is it to know your own bikes um, and uh, be able to manage them yourself. How important is it for riders? Is something that we you know, look forward to hearing from you. Uh, Van, I've uh, asked to unmute yourself. You can go ahead and unmute and start talking if you can hear us. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, sorry. I think two of you are in the same location, so they yeah. asked to ask you. Just kept on asking to. Yeah, he'll have to uh, cut down his uh, speaker volume as well. That's why it's, it's. I'll let you unmute yourself again. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Sorry, just, just a moment, Jan. Yes, and no worries, man. You can go ahead now. I've just. Uh, uh, you know, for, for temporarily parked him in the waiting room, so you can go ahead and talk. So that right. anyways, okay. he's able to hear you from here. So. Okay. Gentlemen, sorry for that. Um, we are friends. That's why we are together. They are bikers. <laughs> um, we do everything together, as you guys know. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, like you said, I'm traveling the world. And fortunately for me, I have uh, been in a few countries where I could uh, join bikers, like in uh, when I was in India. In 2012, 2013, I was at the Goa Bike Week. It was an experience of a lifetime. Um, when I was in the States, I was in Kansas Bike Week. I was in 2016 in Malaysia, and uh, I attended the Manjung Bike Week, where I worked at one of the power plants there, and also the KL Bike. It was awesome. In South Africa, needless to say, there's uh, quite a lot of bike clubs, and uh, charity runs and things like that. One of my most experienced runs was the fact that we had a blanket run in the winter where we would collect old blankets and give them to uh, unfortunate people. And we were 2,199 bikes on the highway and it looked like one big snake coming from beginning to the end. That was all. Um, I like my bikes. I've got seven bikes. Uh, it ranges from a 68 Vespa, which I've rebuilt it myself. Um, I've got a uh, Heritage Classic Harley Davidson. I've got two, actually a few Harley Davidsons. I've got one uh, 1941 Harley Davidson military bike, which I'm busy rebuilding. I've got a 1942 military, uh, police military bike, which uh, I'm busy rebuilding. I've got a uh, Iron Horse Slammer. I've got a 1952 uh, Royal Enfield military style with a sidecar and everything to that. And I like to do everything myself. I'm a firm believer that if something happened on the long side of the road, you must be able to help yourself or there must be somebody to help somebody else. And that is what it's all about. If we can help somebody else or you can help yourself and um, get going, that is part of it. There's not one ride that I've been on which was flawless. There was always somebody with a puncture or a battery or a something happens, I don't know what, but there's always something. And if you don't have the, the skills to help people, we are all stuck and that's what I'm getting at. Is I do everything myself and my motto in life is if somebody else can do it, I can do it. I like to build bikes. I've built quite a few bikes, three or four of them. I like to modify bikes, sometimes to the extreme where other people think I'm crazy, but that's me. And then there's a finer side of me, uh, which I like engraving, especially banknote engraving, which is very, very fine engraving. Uh, and that's the way I embellish the bikes for friends of mine and myself and my wife. I also do some airbrushing work. 
But on top of that, the very first thing that ever comes to my mind when I start my motorcycle is safety. Safety of everybody. Doesn't matter who it is that is joining. We um, always go in a group. We've got a road captain, we've got a sweeper, we've got a medical guy on site. Um, and that's the way we, need, we used to do it. And uh, that's the way I like to do it. Uh, if everybody or anybody ever comes to South Africa, you got my contact details. Don't hesitate. We'll have a jaw of your life going. Roads is good. Places is good. Beer is cold. Weather is nice. Everything is there. You come and you join us and we will have a ball. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, Ren. Cold beer and good roads. Uh, we can't resist that. I think for sure that motivates a lot of people. And uh, I'm sure it's also motivated people to... Uh, you know, know more about their bikes, including myself, not one of those guys. Uh, but Thank it's you. good to have somebody like you, uh, you know, when you're riding. So I think uh, you'll be a good good person to ride along. You'll surely try and uh, you know, do that. Thank you. So Thank next, you. Uh, thanks a lot, Van, for sharing your experience. Uh, we will now go with Mr. Kannan Tiru, uh, who will be our next speaker. Kannan has been riding for uh, more than 30 years now. He is now riding a Yamaha FJR 1300A. He's a senior technical planner for 20 years with the Singapore Airlines Engineering. Uh, he loves long distance riding, venturing into new terrains, meeting different people and getting to know various cultures. Uh, he uh, greated moment, um, his greatest moment was when he was honored by Garuda Malaysia as a president of Singapore Garuda Bikers. He lives with his wife and two children, allows to understand people. His greatest wish is to travel the world on his two wheels and see many people and cultures. Um, wishing that happens, uh, Kannan, I'm unmuting yourself. Uh, over to you. And we would also like you to throw some light on the riding culture in Singapore. How different is it? We heard about Malaysia, uh, Cambodia, etc. Would be great. Thailand, etc. We'd like to hear about you, uh, hear about some stuff in Singapore as well. Over to you, Mr. Kannan, please. Hi, hi, how's everyone? Uh, Kanan here, Singapore, uh, friend of Jess. We ride together. Uh, we are part of the Garuda Bikers and all that. I just like to start, uh, like what everybody said. I also started riding when I was age 16. Been riding for almost 30 years now. Enjoyed every one of my bikes. Enjoyed every one of the experiences that I had. And uh, I've brought forward all these experiences in whichever ride that I'm going to. You see, so it's like, uh, uh, a kind of a record that's brought forward for the next ride to be more sure of what we're doing. At this point in time, I'd like to highlight where... Actually, firstly, I'd like to welcome everybody. And I'd like to thank Oswell for bringing me on board Top Tales. Thank you very much, Oswell. I don't see you here, but thanks again. Uh, and then, uh, like what I was saying, when I was 11 years old, when I was young, I used to travel to Malaysia very often. My mother's side, uh, the family is all from there. So my mother was from Sramban in Malaysia. So I used to go there, visit my cousins. All we started riding at the age of 10 or 11. You know, those uh, small 70, 80 cc bikes. The first time I ever rode that bike, I landed in a drain. And I was balancing myself on both the sides. Class. So <laughs> that was my first riding experience. So that kind of like pushed me into the feel of getting more into the bike stuff and all that. So 16, when I got my license, I got my first bike, a 125 Yamaha 125. Ever since then, I've been riding and I'm moving on with stuff and all that. And later in time, when we got into bigger bikes, riding and all the stuff, I got to meet some good, great friends. Some good people who, are, who I've uh, met and uh, gone with. A lot of rides and all the stuff. Furthest I've been is Hajai. Uh, Thailand Hajai. Been up to Hajai that far. Uh, good experience. Nice terrain. Good uh, sight. Good view. Very nice place. Like what I just said, uh, stated earlier, I've, I would love to travel on both uh, my bikes. I'd like to cover more ground, reach more out to the world, see more people, get to see what's around there and all that stuff. So one, one small thought which I'd like to bring up is uh, I suggested to Oswell the other day, if, uh, if it's possible for everyone in this page, we can get a get-together, a once-a-year get-together in any part of the world. It'll be a very nice thing for all of us. So it'll be a good experience for us to share ideas, you know, exchange thoughts and all that stuff. So I was, I was in conversation with him with that. Let's see how far it goes. Let's see how far it goes. Anyway, guys, thanks for all your talks and uh, ideas and all your briefs that I've got. Thank you so much. Let's keep going with this. See you all soon. Take care. Thanks, Rina. Thank you. Thanks a lot. That's a great idea. And I think we should surely try and 
make that possible. Uh, you know, we have coordinators from across different clubs here, uh, so I'm sure that uh, you know uh, some of us can uh, figure out uh, a way to get together. Thanks a lot, Kanan. We'll now uh, move on to Mr. Sanjay Shanmugam. Uh, Sanjay hails from Sri Lanka. His passion for riding has been uh, taking him to places. He has rode through Sri Lanka and has ridden in India as well. He's a scrapyard owner by profession. He helps his co-riders to fix and build their bikes. He arranges rides in Sri Lanka for international bikers. He has a Royal Enfield Himalayan now uh, for his rides. Um, Sanjay, uh, very, very pleased to have you uh, from Sri Lanka. It would be great to um, you know, know about your experience and, uh, and a bit about the riding culture in Sri Lanka. Probably the, you know, uh, one of the places that we can probably easily access. Uh, we are hoping that you know, you would be able to help us organize some rides there. Sanjay. Uh, Hi, Sriram. Hi, Sriram. Hi, Sriram. My name is Sanjay Sanugam. Uh, I was starting to ride from 16 years old. First, I started to ride a small moped bike. It's only, it was just 49 cc. From my age 18, I started to ride a Pulsar 220, which is 220 cc bike. From that day, I never go to any ride. I, ju I just ride from here to there, from small places. After some days, I bought a, at my 24 years old, I bought a Royal Enfield 350 classic bike. From that, I started to ride to clubs, a lot of clubs like we have Brothers on Bikes on Sri Lanka, and there are some more other clubs, but I am a member on Brothers on Bikes. Uh, I have been to Himalaya, I have been to Cambodia, such places to ride. In Himalaya, I rode around 4 15 days to the Ladakh and every place. And Sri Lanka also, we have a lot of places to ride and a lot of places to see. And if you all have any, I can help you all to ride, come to Sri Lanka and do the best of your rides in future. Uh, actually, in, in future, I'm going to, I'm the president of the Garuda Bikes of Malaysia in Sri Lanka. I am going to start the club and I'm going to be the president on that. If anything, I'm there to help for 24 hours to seven days for you all to bikers of who loves to ride. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Sanjay. So we now have, uh, you know, people across different countries and you can add Sri Lanka as one of them where we can go and, you know, we have a brother there to take us around. Uh, thanks a lot for that, Sanjay. Uh, we will now move on to uh, Mr. Krishna Subba. Uh, Krishna B. Subba hails from Bhutan, uh, one of the countries that I love. He is exploring, learning new places and cultures. His rights are for social causes. He's working in a mining corporation as an administrator. He has a, his beautiful family, wife and two kids love to see him ride, which is a bliss. And he loves to ride with fellow riders and wants to meet new brothers and sisters. Um, across the country. He is the president of Druk Himalayan Riders Motorcycle Club of Bhutan. Um, we have a lot of riders asp aspiring to uh, you know, visit Bhutan, so I'm sure Krishna's words will help us uh, get an insight of the riding culture there. Uh, Krishna, uh, over to you. Krishna, are you able to hear us? Hello. Yeah. Hello. Over to you. Okay. Hello. Uh, yes, Krishna. Please go ahead. We can hear you. Please go ahead. Uh, good example and good evening. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sriram. Uh, uh, I'm from Bhutan. I'm a co-founder of. Uh, I'm a founder of. Uh, the club Druki Malin Riders Motorcycle Club. And uh, currently I'm the president of the club also. And uh, uh, to begin with, I would like to thank uh, Sriram sir, uh, Mr. Asis and the organizer for giving us a, a beautiful platform. In fact, uh, the very objective of our club is, uh, uh, is uh, seen here to promote uh, brotherhood, promotion brotherhood. And this is a beautiful platform. Uh, I can see that uh, I can, uh, I could uh, 
listen to the experiences from different writers from different countries. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sriram, for giving us the platform. So on behalf of my club, Drew Kimalian Riders Motorcycle Club, and on behalf of me, uh, I would write, really like to thank uh, uh, to the organizer here. Thank you so much. Now to begin with the about uh, biking culture of Bhutan, uh, as you all are very aware, Bhutan is a very, very small country with a very small size of population. And uh, as far as my experience is concerned, as far as my opinion is concerned, uh, I could see when I was young, uh, I could see very few bikes going around in, in our country. But uh, this biking culture forming the uh, forming biking clubs uh, in Bhutan, uh, probably I would say it is a new phenomenon here. It is a new concept in Bhutan. And uh, today, uh, when it comes to my club, a uh, few of us biking enthusiasts, we came together, we discussed, and uh, we felt like uh, we should form the club now and uh, promote uh, brotherhood, uh, ride together, have fun, and uh, conduct uh, events for charity funds and go for a social cause. That is what uh, the main objective uh, that we form this club. So basically uh, in Bhutan, we organize uh, events through membership collection. Uh, we raise funds uh, to finance our charity rights we do charity rights. For example, uh, we did recently uh, at uh, one of the schools in Bhutan, a very remote schools, where we supported uh, six children. Uh, they had to come all the way from far away villages uh, to attend their schools. So we supported them for their uh, shelter, for uh, uh, including all the roofs, cement, uh, whatever the sleeping materials required. Uh, we also supported like one of the blind girls uh, in one of the villages uh, to build a uh, shelter for, uh, for their parents. So this kind of things uh, that we have been doing. So the basic aim of the club that we have uh, is uh, mainly to promote brotherhood uh, from the for the bikers from different sections of the society and the community. There is no barrier. Uh, that, is, uh, that is one of our culture. And uh, of course, we would like to promote brotherhood also beyond the international borders. That is one of our objective. The other major objective that we have is to conduct events and raise funds for the charity rights and help the uh, people in villages, in schools, uh, and in so many other areas. So basically these are the things and uh, uh, we hope to uh, take our club to greater height in future and uh, uh, we hope to uh, promote brotherhood beyond international borders. Uh, at the moment currently we are working on that only. So with this uh, rest I don't see so much of differences uh, when it comes to biking culture from other uh, clubs in India, Nepal, or anywhere, or in Cambodia, or Malaysia. So these are the things uh, that we are trying to promote. So this is all I can say right now about the biking culture in Bhutan. So Great, thank you. This is all I have seen. Uh, this is all I have to uh, share my experiences, Mr. Sridham. Thank you so much. Over to you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, Krishna. Thank you very much uh, for sharing your uh, thoughts. We will now move on to Captain Charles Bain. Um, Captain Charles uh, is a 67-year-old passionate biker from Cambodia. Uh, some of you who joined in early might have had a snippet into some of his rides and pictures. Uh, his riding career started in Meghalaya, India uh, in 1973. He owned, the, he owned a Royal Enfield 350cc as his first bike, followed, out, followed it up with a 500cc as a second one. Uh, he was a hotel manager by profession and he has served in Europe, USA, Middle East, Africa and Asia. He organizes rides to Burapa Bike Week with 30 to 40 riders from Cambodia. He is currently the national president of Bayon on Brotherhood Motorcycle Club Cambodia. Captain Charles fixes and upgrades, upgrades his bikes, and he currently owns a Honda VTX 800cc. 
uh, very glad to have you captain um, you know sorry to keep you away from your dinner reservation please uh, the stage is all yours thank you so much sri ram um, good evening gentlemen what a pleasure it is to meet all of you uh, or rather to meet all of you online great honor for of me just a few things uh, i'm supposed to bring up uh, one is the culture of riding in cambodia there's no culture of riding in cambodia it's a free for all style just uh, very defensive riding uh, because uh, firstly you have to take into consideration the population of cambodia is not very educated so uh, the the basics of uh, what we call uh, riding has not been taught in school traffic laws have not been taught in school and uh, it's a free for all world you know survival of the fittest on the road so when you ride in cambodia be very very cautious and always make sure you do have insurance uh, most of us uh, expatriates uh, work in cambodia we have our corporate uh, insurance or we have our own personal insurance for accidents yeah and uh, it can always be a very expensive thing Uh, we organize rides to Thailand, Laos, okay, all over Cambodia, in small groups, large groups. It all depends. Um, but uh, when we ride, we always have one person who will be in charge. What we call the medic in the group, and the person carries the first aid kit. That's very important for all of us. And uh, I always uh, like to impress on all the riders, please. put your name the country you are from i'm trying to show you this i don't know if whether you can see this all right if can you see this no i hold it up okay anyway you put your name the country you are from your blood type and emergency contact uh, many a times a lot of people have accidents and uh, they don't have any kind of documentation on them so it's very important you make uh, your name where you are from your blood type and emergency contact right so and then stick it on your onto your bike all right so maybe it's uh, i don't know can you see it i don't know uh it's difficult okay right that's the first one okay mm -hmm. next one is uh, always just to have a laminated thing, uh, copy sorry uh, laminated copy of your driving to license you just, uh... sorry go ahead If you want to sh uh, show us uh, what you are showing, just uh, the back screen, the virtual background, you close it, and then you can able to show us. Okay, right. We'll find another way. Because of virtual time. background, it is unable. Unable, ah. Huh? Okay, okay. Yeah. So I won't show you anything. <laughs> Much easier. <laughs> I'll just des uh, describe it. Okay. Next yeah, one. Okay. Always have laminated copies of your driving license. Uh, what do you call uh, registration of your vehicle? laminated copies stored in uh, plastic uh, little uh, little plastic bags with zip lock or whatever stash it in different parts of your motorcycle on yourself and uh, the whichever bag you are carrying this is very important because sometimes uh, you have uh, in cambodia a lot of snatch thieves or in vietnam right so you can get uh, your bag snatch at least you have a copy of some documentation right for your embassy or for the police etc etc so that you will not have uh, encounter any problems so this is some of the stuff uh, i would like to say to you and always make sure when you travel internationally you have a set of uh, passport uh, photographs spare passport photographs with you right and of course don't forget the sticker of your country flag on your motorcycle right that's very very important right uh, anything else sir man i think that's uh, very much all i have to say and uh, gentlemen ride safe and god bless all of you okay that's all for me thanks a lot captain short and sweet uh, you know thanks very much for sharing your experiences uh, you know very inspirational we will now move on to mr haridas logidasan uh, haridas logidasan hails from perak malaysia uh, his 15 years of riding days made him own a suzuki hayabusa and kawasaki gtr 1400 he has received a uh, few brotherhood committee and charity awards is a founder of gtr indian owners club uh, guiding young riders with his experience and knowledge about biking and bike um, his ride from singapore to thailand um, is one of the applauding achievements uh, that he has uh, he didn't stop from being a biker he's an experienced track rider too uh, 
Uh, his future goal is to organize safety programs for every budding rider. Um, I would now request Mr. Um, you know, Haridas to take over. I think it's the Samsung Galaxy 7 Edge that he's on. I've asked you to unmute. If you can hear me, Mr. Haridas, go ahead. And... Yeah, Mr. Sriram, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Great. We also want right. to hear about your track riding experience too, Haridas. Okay, can, can. Okay, good evening, everyone. First of, all, first of all, thank you to add me in and invite me. Okay, Maharidas from Malaysia Para. Uh, uh, you want to know about my riding experience on a track? Well, uh, I like to ride bike, especially fast. Most of them, uh, my G1, I rode with G1, Suresh Krishna, uh, all of them. So what I feel, track is more safe to ride bike. But in order to ride in the track, you need some proper manner proper way and proper guidance. So to become a professional, not a prof become a professional rider, you need to know about uh, something that you need to apply in a track. So I slowly learn on the step and uh, I'm still learning, I'm still learning. And uh, so I teach some of my uh, colleagues, not only riding on track, especially ride on the corners, how to uh, how to apply the, your riding skill on the corners, uh, braking, uh, all these things. Where I learn from others, I, uh, when I others, I when I learn from others, and I, I, I distribute to others. Okay. Apart from that, uh, I I'm a founder of GTR Indian Owner Group uh, in Malaysia, and. Uh, uh, so, Sriram, I think that's it, Sriram. I pass it to you. Great. Thanks a lot, uh, okay. uh, Thank you. Thank you for your Thank you. Uh, thoughts there. Uh, Nishadeep, are you around? I couldn't see you in uh, the... If you can raise your hand if you're around, uh, Nishadeep. No, I don't think you are. So, I think we've covered everybody. Uh, now, we will move on to our own uh, rider from India. Uh, so, uh, Piyush Nandeka is the next uh, speaker for us. Uh, Piyush hails from India. Of course, this is an international okay, forum. So uh, he represents like um, our country. He's been riding for the past 21 years. He currently rides a Mojo XC300. He's ridden across uh, Nepal, Bhutan, Myanmar uh, as the first ever Mojo rider to complete three country rides. Mojo is a you know, proud partner for Talk Talk Tales as well. He's been recognized for his fastest southern coastal trip by the Indian Book of Records. He's a dynamic leader for the Mojo tribe in Western India, motivating like-minded riders to achieve their childhood dream. Um, so since we've heard from you know, many other international riders, I'd also expect Piyush to talk about what we can probably learn from uh, those in India and uh, uh, you know, the future of that. So Piyush, over to you. Um, please take over. Yes. Thank you so much, uh, Shriram, for the introduction and for this platform. Well, uh, honored to be here with big riders from different countries. So about me, my name is Piyush Namikar. I'm basically from the west zone of uh, India, from Pune. Uh, since uh, I was 17, I've, I'm riding the bikes, motorbikes. So the, my first bike was uh, 150 when I was 16, 17. So now uh, reaches to 300 cc. I'm a proud owner of Mahindra Mojo XT300. Uh, good experience, uh, I started uh, destinations, uh, international destinations in 2017. Uh, the first uh, country was Bhutan. The second country was in 2018, which was uh, Myanmar. And recently in 2019, I, uh, I've ridden uh, Mojo at Nepal destination. The parents also, the Nepal parents are awesome. So like about experience when I was uh, riding towards international destinations uh, into Bhutan, into Nepal, and in, in even Myanmar also. I experienced uh, off-road patches weather in Nepal like into a lower Mustang and about to Muktinath. So just want to share that 
uh, if you are riding towards uh, into a into your country or into a international destination, you have to be a uh, fit and fine by health. The first point. The second, uh, get a proper information about the destination and uh, be ready with uh, dates, routes, and be ready with your proper riding gears for the safety. And uh, apart from this, uh, yes, uh, if anyone wants to uh, wants to join with me as a rider into India, so I will help. I'll be very glad to host him in India, West Zone. And uh, yes, looking forward to meet all soon. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Piyush. Uh, you know, it was a great introduction from everybody. Uh, we will now be moving into sort of an open discussion. Uh, meanwhile, happy to have uh, any uh, you know audience who would have some questions. Please feel free to raise your hands. Uh, we will predominantly have the panel while you ask your questions. We will have the panel talk about a few points. We will try and guide the questions to right people. But anybody else from the panel, if you want to add something, uh, use the raise hand button and the moderator will take your inputs too. Uh, audience as well, please feel free to raise your hands if you have any questions. So that we can, uh, you know, uh, direct them to the right uh, panel member. Um, so we have a very diverse panel here, uh, and uh, you know, over the last couple of talk tales webinars as well, one of the points that we discussed from a couple of international riders with the perception of bikers, right? Uh, while you know very clearly that a lot of people, when we spoke to, spoke spoke about today, everybody had a social cost to it, right? Everybody wanted to have safety as a key aspect, even for other bikers helping each other. But there is still a perception among public uh, for bikers. Uh, we know that that at least is a mixed bag in India. There is one side of people, young guys who are fascinated seeing uh, bikers on the road. The other side who do not really like bikers because they have a different perception. Uh, you know, when you're in your you know gears and you know uh, driving your bikes across the roads. How is it in uh, Southeast Asian countries? Has it changed? What are you guys doing to change that perception? Are things that we would love to um, hear about. So uh, maybe Jeevanna, we'll start with you. Uh, you know, what do you think is it? And then, you know, any other panelists who want to add, we will try and get, uh, you know, a mixed set of response uh, from Jess and others too. Yeah, thanks, Ridham, actually. Uh, well, let's talk about hatred on, on communities towards bikers. There are several reasons, actually. Uh, first, uh, Let's say there are some riders who love to affix tattoo on them, right? So um, there's a kind of style actually. But when they see tattoo on a rider's body, they think that uh, they're like gangsters, right? Okay, but they are not. They are not. It's, it's purely style for the riding of bikes and having a Harley Davidson and wearing a sleeveless jacket and so on. So when it, that's the perception of each of them. At times, some of the riders what they will do, they ram the bikes around housing areas, all right? Ride it fast. And uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, housing areas that's quite compact and apartments, condos, and so on. When you make such a sound and so on, it's being hated to them. So they just overall say that I hate bikes that makes that such a sound, right? And uh, secondly, on highways, at times they don't follow rules. They'll be working on uh, left lane, right lane, third lane, fourth lane, you know, going left and right, swinging here and there, and causing some of the car drivers to be feared when they are driving. So when that happens, Again, they'll tend to hate the riders, right? So basically, it's like uh, again, like earlier, Mohanana says that uh, we need proper discipline, um, and uh, youngsters that are catching up with the bikes now has to go on certain courses, like what Suresh Krishna was suggesting just now, um, safety riding courses and uh, uh, riding skills and so on. When they have all these things, well, they tend to okay keep in control. And looking at the uh, positive part where people like biking is because first and foremost, bikes style, all right, uh, sound, and some of them take it as a hobby, like I had it since seven years old, I loved bikes and so on, but when is you get fun now, all right, so I feel that all this, uh, the hatred is a contributing factor of uh, whatever that I say is a contributing factor for people to say that they hate bike and bikers, I know, that's that's the core reason, so, but uh, this is absolute, not my perception, it's a parameter that we have found that a lot of people have been saying about this directly to us. Uh, well, my experience in uh, uh, among my neighbors also, they, they don't like sound of bikes. 
You know, when we start the bike early in the morning, we we'll tend to heat up the bike in the next neighbor here and there, they start running the lights and so on, you know. That's uh, some possible problems that we face. And uh, when you're staying apartments, condos and so on, your parking base below, when you start your, especially your powerful bikes with powerful sound, noise, terrible effect. And the neighbors will say, hey man, this guy's too noisy. So these are the possible factors that people tend to hate bikers, regardless what bike they ride. Uh, well, this is my opinion. Uh, from, from our place here, Malaysia. Yes, sir. Uh, sir yes, thank sir. You, thanks, Jivana. Yeah. Uh, Jess, would you like to add anything? Uh... Uh, well, yes, yes, what our brother Jess mentioned. I think this is the usual perspective of those who hate bikes. Uh, but for bikers, the sound of the exhaust is wonderful. <laughs> um, but I guess uh, it also needs the discreetness of our bikers or vessel, where we are riding and as to where we are riding. Because I, uh, even as to where I'm staying, there are some riders in the middle of the night, they like to rev while parking in the car park. And it's, even as a biker, it's quite irritating to me. Uh, because there might be old folks or children who are sleeping uh, it can wake them up. So we need to, as a biker, we also need to have some discreteness as to what we are doing. So we, we cannot be pleasing everyone. It's impossible. Uh, but at least uh, we can do our part to do the right things, uh, not to cause inconvenience to others. Uh, uh, to be more conscious of what we are as to what we are doing for our bikes. So maybe over the time, uh, even those who hate us, our neighbors know when we see our actions, our positive actions, maybe they will come to accept of, as of to who we are. You know, that's the only thing that we can do. Other than that, we can't force people to to love us or our bikes. You know? I guess uh, that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, very, very to the point, uh, you know, practical uh, inputs there. Kanan, would you have to add anything? I know Singapore's laws are very, very strict. So how does it, how, what's your opinion on it? Okay, based on what uh, we heard from Jeevan and uh, Jess, we have that issue. Uh, there are two kinds of society that we are looking at. Those who love bikes from the car. Or those who don't like bikes from also the car. It's an it's a individual kind of an acceptance, I would say. I would say that when we ride, our exhaust pipe is our flute. It gives us the sound that we like. So we kind of like, you know, try to ram as much as we like to ride the bike with. But we also have to look into the environment and the society that we're in, uh, where the elderly, the young ones, the, the people. That, that's, that's, that's the only reason why I believe that uh, we are also not allowed to have exhaust pipes that are modified and all that stuff. Most of our riders, friends, when you go touring and all that, they got bikes that are more modified. It, it helps them, the performance, the sound is better, the performance is better. But we don't have that privilege here. The normal, normal original pipe which the bike comes in also is so loud. So I think for looking into that aspect of things, I think people have to have a certain level of understanding towards bikers. It's a give and take issues. Like what they always say, the five hands, the fingers are not the same. Everybody has got a different concept about things and all that stuff. How we look at it, we we love doing what we are doing. I would not change myself or anything. Neither would I be an hindrance to anyone else. So let's just maintain our safe peace and happiness in what we are writing and doing. Thanks, you know. Thanks, Khan. And very, very, uh, you know, very nicely put, actually. Uh, you know, we hope that, uh, you know, a lot of us will be able to, uh, you know, to imbibe some of these and, you know, use that in our daily lives when we take our bikes out. So in, when we talk about perception, one thing that's changed over the last few years, uh, at least in India, and I, I know that for a fact that it's happening across the world, is, uh, you know, the riders have started taking social causes, uh, right? And that also has different mixed responses. I know that when we organize, as, you know, a lot of coordinators are here. Oswald, uh, you know, is a, is a coordinator from Chennai. Ashish, the founder for BCI is here. Uh, we have uh, Sanup. We have a few more guys who've been coordinating Save Earth rides here. It is a, it is a ride where we, we, we participate in tree plantation uh, in India. And it was a, it was a 
you know, among the uh, record breaking initiative in India for those many trees that have been planted last time, all bikers, right, throughout all the 28 states. But, uh, you know, it, it, it drew a bit of flack as well from some saying that, hey, you guys are polluting the environment. You know, we've talked about it in the previous Talk Tales webinar, so I wouldn't get into that side of it and why we are doing it, etc. But when, you know, how important is, is using this platform to spread spread words, spread awareness, right? Things like, uh, you know, uh, I know a few of them spoke about riding for COVID and so on and so forth. So what is, what are your opinions on that, right? Do you belong to the thought process that we should use this platform when we go out on the roads, you know, a lot of you ride fancy bikes, uh, you know, use that to uh, throw awareness about some initiative. What is your thought process? I will probably start with Sean. Uh, you know, I heard him talk about uh, some social aspects that he, got about Sean what what would you like to see why did you probably start doing it and what do, what do you think what's your advice for other bikers who are probably moving in that direction are you able to unmute yourself now yeah, yeah. all right so, it's very interesting to hear from uh, the rest of the panel talking about the perception as well as the consideration given being at the bike um, bike responsible and what I'm trying to say is that uh, I remember this, uh, this um, uh, trip uh, or the, the rally that I did in Malaysia, Malaysia Peninsula Rally. We actually rode all the way into a religious school. And, and they imagine that um, they were all surprised that uh, we are all like basically all geared up and, uh, you know, we dress up with all those like, like things. But at the end of the day, when we took our helmet and our jacket, they embraced us and they all to know us as far as, uh, as friendly as a biker, we can be like any other human being. And I remember very well that I showed them the skull. The skull means that it's uh, just like any other uh, human being. Besides taking out all our face features, what I'm trying to say is there's no discrimination no matter what race, religion, or status. We are all belong to the same uh, human being. That means representing the scout doesn't mean that it's like a preaching or some sort of a cult or some sort of connection. So this give them some enlightenment, that knowing that a biker, just like any other human being, uh, we come with a very strong, uh, I mean, <clears throat> with the heart that uh, we are spreading the kindness. As far as uh, I can say that uh, being a biker with the full consideration of any uh, people are surrounding us, we always look up, not only among ourselves, but also the road user, for example, uh, knowing that they might not be aware about uh, certain things, uh, for example, the road safety awareness. We need to advocate them as well as advocate uh, about the safety because it, at the end of the day, uh, we want to enjoy uh, riding. Uh, we all the community are uh, familiar with the bikers uh, community uh, as well. So in a way, when we do a charity or course, uh, we always want to spread the message. So biker is just like any human being. Uh, we don't really campaign to be proud as far as uh, try to represent any, uh, you know, society gang with the kind of, uh, you know, very ego stick. But at the same time, we are just like any human being and we do spread the kindness through our activities and also the spread of the uh, road safety uh, uh, activities as well. So. This is uh, my thing for, you know, in case uh, everyone was look, always looking upon that the bikers, uh, why do you have the cow things? This is because it represents that we are all the same. Thanks, Sean. Of course, we're all human beings as well. And, you know, that's being good is part of that. I yeah. think so we should not uh, shy away from anything, even though, you know, we are biking and probably more be more responsible that way. Yeah. Uh, Murli uh, is also here. He's also done some great work uh, in terms of social causes. Murli, what, what's your thoughts on this? Uh, thanks, Priyam. As like what Jeevan said, I, I'm not sure about other countries, but in Malaysia those days, if you see bikers riding big bikes in a group, will be labeled as notorious riders. As what, is, as what Jeevan said, because our tattoos and the way we ride the bikes and all that. But lately, uh, we Malaysians, we are, we are riding bikes and organizing more charity events, things like that. So people can see that we are not just ordinary riders, but we are also helping the communities to, you know, to solve some, some social problems, issues and all that. And uh, 
my personal experience about about modifying exhaust because I'm I own a GTR same like like Jimens and my if if you listen to my bike sound is a bit uh, I can say a bit loud but that alert the drivers you know especially when you're riding at nights right so we I mean we can have modified parts on our bikes but we should know when and how to use it that that's the most important thing. And I, I still feel that doing more charity events, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying that every month or every week when you write, you must do a charity ride. But as long as there is a charity ride, people will understand that riders are not just riders, they are doing something for the community and also for the country. That, that is through my experience. And uh, uh, I can I, if I, I, I hope I hope Jeevan and Hari they don't mind me mentioning this. These two are speed demons. They love speed, and the the, the best thing about them is even uh, you know I've been riding for thirty years, more than thirty years, but I still feel uh, uh, fascinated the, to see how the way they are handling the bikes. Super handling skills, both of them. So. Maybe you guys can 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 you know you can get some ideas from from both of them how to deal with that. Like Hari, I think most of his skills he got it from uh, track riding uh, uh, with his high high busa. Right, he has two bikes, and he loves both bikes. And <laughs> and the way of riding the bikes are different. So I I think that you know we need to when you ride, you need to make sure that that there will be people who hates you. Because of not because of you, the way of you ride, maybe because of they feel that you no, know, we are riders, we are trying to show off our bikes, things like that. So we, we need to make sure that uh, in future try to minimize this kind of uh, feelings that that can happen by the way that we ride our bikes. Thanks, thanks a lot, uh, Murli. Uh, do we have Suresh around? Maybe Suresh, it'll be good to get your views on. You know, you do a lot of uh, coordination with government, etc., for social causes. How do you think the response is from the biking community, and you know, what do you think can be done better, etc.? Yep, Sri Ram. Uh, okay. First, uh, first of all, uh, bikers, the attitudes, most of like my group, uh, it's uh, my group. We are very particular on their attitudes and the discipline while we are riding in the highways, even though any government programs. So we are very curious on our bikers' attitudes. So once we are normally we organize a ride. So normally before we do the rides, we will have a plan, riding plans and meetups. And we will sit up before we do all these rides. We will sit with all these riders. Then we will discuss. Then we will share our plans. So uh, as uh, Morliana and Jivan share, it's about when uh, we are in the highways or even in the small towns when you are riding in, uh, in uh, people's place around in housing areas or in highways, we must keep our disciplines when we are riding. Okay, let's say we, we, we like my, uh, if normally we, how we organize, we will select, uh, okay, about, the menu, we will minimize about seven riders wherever we go. We won't do anywhere, any riding anywhere, we will say maximum is six to seven riders. So while the six or seven riders, we will explain to them once we're riding, where to speed up, when to, where to slow down. And we will uh, we will just coordinate with, it's like last, uh, when, when I was uh, riding with Jeevan. So they, we will have a marshal in our group. So lead rider in the middle and the back. So they will normally, they will coordinate all our riders. So keeping all in safe, uh, I mean, and the uh, roads, they will follow according their instruction to keep the riders safe all the ride till they come back. So normally, uh, I would like to suggest if you all uh, guys to plan have a ride, I think we can, you all can arrange a meet up and sit with the riders before you start on to do these coordinates, uh, I mean, riding coordinates. Uh, so discuss with them about the safety of them to write. So they will, uh, maybe we can explain to them the most important is safe for the riders 
when they are riding on the roads thank you thanks a lot uh, suresh i think haridas also wants to add a few points uh, over to you yeah sriram okay sorry i just want to add on what mr murali just now said uh, i had a buza nearly about 6 years uh, okay so first 3 years i don't i didn't modify modify the exhaust and then my bike sound was very normal very quiet consider but there's sometimes in this 3 years i found a lot of uh, uh, cars they didn't notice me so suddenly when we are pulling in the high speed they suddenly came to our way so once i i changed my exhaust i can notice that some cars can uh, i can feel that some car can notice that we are behind so as a rider i feel it's a bit safe for us but as uh, in 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 in, our, in other way we as a rider we must make sure that our we we we, we to, to, to care the community so where we have to ref and where we have to to to, to slow down our motorbike so all these things so personally for me changing a exhaust is good but it depends on uh, where and how you use it thank you back to you thanks a lot haridas thanks for that uh, you know we are we are getting towards the end of the session now and we had like you know 13 panelists today so it's you know very difficult to pull in everybody and give you equal time sorry for that we will of course however try and have more detailed sessions with with a few members picked up you know whoever wants to add we will try and do that because there's been significant interest uh, in hearing you this is just a start of an exchange of ideas Uh, we want to try and bring in you know different cultures different countries different riders together and try and see if we can you know create you know start a you know an exchange of ideas and cultures and stuff and that's the intent with which uh, we are starting this webinar series this is just the first in three we already done a few webinars uh, we we have two more coming up in the following weekends we have one with um, you know forgy riders veterans coming in and talking to us who ride bikes we also have international riders women that will be happening the following weekend uh, so like i said this is just a start i'd like to uh, you know pull in now a couple of our uh, you know coordinators from bci starting with ashish who's the founder and chief of bci to share his thoughts on how we can probably sustain this and you know also thank the panelists and you know we'll we'll call the other coordinated coordinates to quickly ashish over to you yeah thanks everyone for joining today and accepting our invitation so it's a uh, nice and pleasure to see everyone here and uh, we are uh, like a shri ram uh, said and everybody is talking about the cause events so we are also conducting a one cause ride that is named the saver ride previous year we are hosted uh, in a 83 cities and more than 24000 riders are joined with us and 300 plus clubs in uh, india and uh, that is uh, become a india book of records so we are not just only planted a saplings we just nurturing them so we told each and every club ki don't give go for a numbers if you want to plant a one tree and you saplings and you want to take your just plant one don't go for a numbers ki i can plant 1000 or 500 and we are succeeded so plants are survive rate is a more than 98% and still we are nurturing them and the idea came ki the bikers everybody who are sitting in the bmw and ac they are using they are saying ki you are the bikers you people are causing a pollutions so right now we are probably say that ki yeah we whatever the pollution we are causing we are uh, just uh, removing our carbon footprints while planting a saplings and last year we got a support from uh, 18 countries and all the five continents so this year we are looking for a uh, more ki all the biking for really join our hands and make a movement in a world wide so thanks to everyone to joining for that and welcome and next week we have a session with a forgy riders and after that the women female riders and we'll continue to connecting with each and a different different kind of culture clubs and exchanging ideas and sharing the thoughts and learning from each other thank you over to the shiram thanks ashish thanks thanks for that and thanks for coordinating this uh, next we have oswald Oswald uh, is our BCA coordinator for, from Chennai. Um, you know, also uh, runs his biking club there. Oswald has been the pillar for this program. I think all of you have, and a lot of the panelists have joined in uh, through him. Thanks a lot, Oswald, for organizing this. And also, I'd like you to add a few words on how we can probably sustain this. And and thank your friends for, you know, joining in. I know you you have personal relationships with all of them. Thank you, Sriram. 
I would like to you know say thanks to each and everyone who you know participated today. And I'm very sorry, like few of the questions have not been asked actually here. So due to the time constraint. So I would like to say like, you know, those questions, if possible, like we would like to reach out to the panelists individually and get them answered very shortly, if possible, if possible. I would like to insist that if possible. So thank you everybody, every guest who spent your valuable time here during this, you know, COVID lockdown situation and all these things, uh, leaving your you know, routine work life and being with us for here. And uh, so next year, FAUG riders, for those who do not know what is FAUG riders, they are the veterans of, you know, uh, veterans from a country, from India. So we'll be here uh, with them. Their riding experience will be shared with us next Sunday. And later, followed by that later week, we'll have the female riders. So these are the two things coming up uh, as in webinar series in Top Tales. And followed by that, we'll be having the Save Earth ride. Uh, since like most of our Indian states are still in lockdown, we have requested uh, every club and every city admins to you know plant at least one tree in front of the houses and nurture that. So I would like uh, request all the panelists also to support us in the same. So to promote planting trees in your localities and all those things. And Sriram, thank you, Sriram. Thank you for the opportunity. Thanks, uh, Oswal. The pleasure, pleasure having you as always. Uh, we have Rakshit Rai, who is also one of the moderators of the event. Uh, Rakshit, uh, you know, over to you. I don't think you need any introduction. Rakshit is from Mojo Tribe, of course, uh, one of our supporters, uh, and he's one of 15 members from Top Tales. Go ahead, Rakshit. Okay, uh, thank you, Sriram, for moderating the event, and thank you, Ashish and Oswal, for uh, organizing this successful event. And uh, thanks to all the speakers and all the participants who joined this event today, because uh, no, no, this is one of its kind, kind of uh, no, virtual meeting which is happening for the bikers, and uh, that to you know, cross country. Uh, brothership, uh, brotherhood is getting celebrated. So thank you so much, everyone. Uh, no, Mojo Tribe is like, you no, know, we are having uh, this biking group and we are really lucky and you know, uh, happy to get associated with Talk Tales, uh, you know, which they are conducting this webinar series. And uh, it's really great and pleasure uh, hearing and watching everyone out there. Uh, no, probably I saw one, uh, one suggestion in the comment box right now that why don't we have a WhatsApp uh, group for all the bikers out there, so that we can share our you know, cross culture, cross country culture, and experiences uh, to sustain this kind of interaction with all the people across borders. So that is you know, really a good suggestion. If we can incorporate, that would be really great. So that I'm leaving up to Ashish and Shiram. You know how is the possibility of doing that? Uh, now once again, thank you everyone uh, for uh, making this happen, and uh, glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you. I know a lot of the panelists are also, uh, you know, sharing their thanks. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, we wanted to wrap it up uh, in 90 minutes. Uh, so I will, uh, you know, request that they can share it and we will try and get together again. Uh, we will try and have more close sessions and we'll try and bring, bring the community together. Uh, a, a formal vote of thanks uh, will be delivered now by uh, Lieutenant Colonel Luman Jacob. Uh, Jacob, over to you. Let me just allow you to unmute yourself. That will be the, the last, uh, you know, part of the, the webinar today. Uh, while uh, Jacob connects, uh, we look forward to having all of you in the future sessions of Talk Tales as well. Uh, like it's out there in the collaterals, we have two more interesting webinars coming up. Next week, it's Apology Riders. And following week is International Riders Women. So you'd like more participation from everybody in the upcoming sessions. So thanks, everyone, for joining. And over to you, Jacob. Hi everyone, uh, it's been such a pleasure to watch everybody speak here. You know, like uh, like they say, every problem brings out an opportunity. Now COVID has come, lockdown has come. There we are here talking to everybody out here. You know, we all we all we all uh, are riding. You know, first of all, we start riding for the love of our bikes, and then we found, found, find our dearest buddy riding again. So we decide to ride together. Then we find a few of them. We make a club and we ride together. Today, sitting here and uh, listening to all of you, you know, uh, the reason for riding, one is uh, the, the feel itself, the bikes. Second is our brotherhood. And now, and uh, seeing the countries and the, the places around. See, now, when you look at it, you know, people from Cambodia, Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, India, a lot of people talking. You know, uh, the, one of the reasons many of us will find for riding is to just to come and meet you all. You know, that is going to be an amazing opportunity for us. 
Now, I want to thank uh, all the panelists here to for taking out their their, their valuable time and uh, speaking to us and sharing your experiences. I want to thank all the viewers here and on YouTube and also on Facebook and wherever they are watching us live for participating and making it a success. And uh, thanks to Talk Tales for making this opportunity so that we can all connect together and uh, share our love for each other. Uh, thanks to all the uh, brands which have uh, helped us organize this, uh, all on the board which is there, all the names. I don't want to take each and every name. Uh, uh, and uh, Sriram has uh, done a very, very good job in handling this whole thing with so many panels in a very, very efficient manner, exactly to the point uh, in the given time. And thanks to everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Jacob. I am sorry. I know that a lot of participants also wanted to uh, you know, share. We generally have uh, you know, more interactive experience today. We couldn't do that because uh, you know we don't want to stretch it too long uh, you know on a sunday evening uh, from the next webinars we wouldn't have those many these many panelists we wanted to bring in as many you know we had more than i think eight to nine countries participants from eight nine countries today but um, from the next session we will surely try and uh, incorporate uh, you know participants as well on the webinar uh, and try and limit the number of panelists uh, like how jacob said uh, you know talk tales is our media platform uh, you know we would urge all of you to share your writing experiences. Uh, you know that will be promoted uh, both on the online magazine as well as all the social media platforms. Um, and uh, you know we would love to hear some of your stories, get that published. You can send them across to uh, Ashish, uh, you know, or Oswald, or any of you, any of them here, any of us here, and we will ensure that your stories are stories reach out to more, more many more people, not just for the panelists, but everybody who is participating here. We would like you to come and. Uh, the, the handles are now on the chat window. We would like you to follow, like, subscribe, you know, whatever you want to do and share as much stories as possible with us and also keep following us and keep participating in the upcoming webinars. We will try and, uh, you know, and also if you want to talk about something, please do, you know, send us your ideas. We will try and, uh, you know, have you in for one of these sessions that is coming ahead in one form or the other. So yeah, thanks, I Barbara. want to add something. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, please. Yeah, okay. We will uh, we will invite them again for a, a detailed session. Sridam, over to you. Yes, absolutely. We will do that. And I'm sorry that you know we couldn't attend to all the raised hands today. And I think it's seven five. We had ninety minutes sorted out for this webinar, and I think we're on time. So thanks a lot, everybody, for joining in. Um, and yeah, that's about it from us today. Look forward to seeing you guys uh, next weekend. Thank you. Thanks, panelists. Thanks, participants. Thank you, everybody. You have a good weekend or a Sunday evening and a great week ahead. Thank you. Bye.